Okay, so the next field we have is fragmentation header. So in case of IPv4, the fragmentation uh, has to be uh, done by the router, intermediate routers. Fine. So if the packet is reached by if this intermediate router, it checks whether its size is less than the MTU of this correspond or this next LAN or not. If it is more than this LAN, then it used to fragment this packet. Fine. But these are the things which were by which the processing at the router was slow. So in case of IPv6, the main reason why we are switching toward IPv6 is we want the fast processing at the router end. Fine. So that's why we are not allowing in IPv6, we are not allowing the, power, the packet to be fragmented anywhere except the source. So the only the source or the sender has the power to fragment the packet. No intermediate router has to fragment the packet. So for that fear, the, for that purpose, if the packet is fragmented, if the source has to fragment the packet, then it is pro that information is provided in the form of extension header. Fine. So if you see the header format of the extension header uh, for fragmentation header, it has a field next header. Fine. So which is of size 8 bit. Then we have some 8 bit reserve. Then same as IPv4 we have fragment offset field of 13 bit means what does fragment offset be, uh, field implies in a, as in IPv4 it represents that the number of bytes of this packet are ahead of this correspond of this packet so if the packet is fragmented the fragment offset field tell you that the current the current packet you are processing it is that many bits are ahead of this packet Fine, and this field and these many bits are zero, and this field m bit. This is one bit. The m bit is same as uh, we have in uh, IPv4. This uh, it means more fragment. Means are there more fragment uh, after this packet or not, or is this the last fragment? Fine. So if there are more fragment for following this packet, then this field uh, this bit will be one. Otherwise, it is zero, and uh, we have the identification by which we can identify uh, uh, identify that which packet fragment it is uh, this packet fine so just to just to keep the processing fast at the router we are not allowing intermediate router to fragment the packet it is the responsibility of the source to fragment the packet and all the corresponding information about the fragmentation are provided in the form of fragmentation header instead of including in this in ipv6 header why because we want the base header uh, we want the base header size to be fixed so this is all about fragmentation header uh, one more thing in ipv6 header suppose in the base header you have some next header uh, let it be hop by hop option header then this then this and then you have fragmentation header now this part this part has to be checked by every router for every packet fine so this part whether it be uh, whether it could be any fragment of uh, the packet this part all the other headers before the fragment header that information is needed by every router so this part of the packet is unfragmentable so only this part of a packet can be fragmented so if the packet size is bigger then source fragment the packet but is it allowed to fragment only this part of the packet and this part this part of the packet will be uh, will be attached before every fragment so this is fragment 1 so this part will be attached this, this is fragment 2 this part is attached and likewise so this part is unfragmentable which will be attached with every fragment and this part which is fragmentable part is can be chunked into the fragment by source only so in ipv6 also if uh, the intermediate router is find any problem with the corresponding option fields or extension extension header field it is allowed to send the icmp packet to the corresponding source fine as we used in the ipv4 suppose there is a source a and it is second it is sending some packet to source b fine so it's, it is sending some packet to source b Suppose in the middle, somebody else which is on this network, listen to this packet 
then it can corrupt this packet or it can do multiple things with this packet. So there is a need for security at the at network layer as well. Fine. So until now with IPv4 we have security features, but that is with the help of application layer. But in the IPv6 also uh, with IP okay. But we are, in network layer also we can provide security. It is needed. Fine. So what are the security? Uh, why do we need security? Is suppose uh, suppose when A sends some packet to B, uh, this packet is listened by the intermediate node and it corrupt that uh, it corrupted this packet and send it to this B. Then, when this packet has to be received by B, it will receive this uh, it will receive this corrupted packet. So we need the feature by which B can get to know the integrity of the message. Fine. So this is the security feature we have is message integrity so when a sent some packet to uh, to b the message has to be the integrity has to provide that the message is not corrupted in between or when a is sending some private message or some confidential thing to b he may or uh, he may or may not want that some other node in the uh, in between the network can listen to this packet fine so there can be issue with the confidentiality we want con confidentiality fine uh, as well as what uh, this intermediate no, station can do is it can uh, it can take this packet and uh, uh, with the uh, so what this intermediate node can do is that it can send some other packet on behalf of node A because after reading this packet it, it can get to know what is the source address of A so it can send some other packet to B claiming that this is the packet coming from A so how does B know that packet is actually sent by A? So we need authentication. So when some packet is received by receiver, it should be authenticated that it is sent by the corresponding sender only. Somebody else is not sending on the behalf of that sender. Fine. Or there could be a replay pack. Uh, suppose uh, in case of banking application, A is sending some rupees, let's say 5 rupees to B. Now someone in between what can what he can do is he can send this message multiple times to B. So suppose A was sending this packet rupees 5 uh, from his account to B. Now this intermediate node sends the same packet 5-6 times. So instead 5-6 times he sent a copy of this message to B. Fine. So what happened is that instead of sending rupees 5 uh, for just one time, A has sent rupees 5 multiple times to B. So this should not happen. So for all these things, for all these attacks, we need security at the network layer. So the, all these, actually all these protocol has been designed by this organization, ITEF, Internet Inter Engineering Task Force. So they have developed the protocol called IPSEC. Internet Protocol Security, which runs at the network layer. Now, this uh, this protocol is compatible with IPv4 as well and IPv6 both. So, IP security feature is uh, designed by uh, inter uh, engineering, uh, uh, Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, which is compatible with which will run at the network layer, and it is compatible for both IPv4 packets and IPv6 packet. So, with the uh, so with IPv4 packet also we can provide the security features fine so IPsec is not just a single protocol actually it's a collection of protocol collection of protocols which are needed to provide all the security features which I was telling about like confidentiality uh, authentication or uh, message integrity and all so it's a collection of protocol to provide all these features Fine. So it has authentication header, authentication header, uh, which is one of the extension header. It has ESP encapsulation security protocol, and likewise. So to provide all the security features, authentication, confidentiality, message integrity, this IPsec 
is a feature uh, which is a collection of protocol so like extension authentication header esp with the help of all these protocol these uh, all these security feature has been provided and which are which are compatible with both ipv4 and ipv6 so how does ipv4 packet and ipv6 packet is come along uh, how does ipv ipsec provide security with the help uh, with ipv4 packet and ipv6 packet so the ip module ip security module work in two modes transport mode and tunnel mode so when host is want to send some data to host it use transport mode so what happens in uh, happens in transport mode is you receive some uh, uh, segment from transport layer fine then ip module ip security module will transform this uh, this transport layer pa 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 did, uh, this transport layer segment will be modified by ip security module uh, it will, it can uh, do some kind of encryption on everything to provide this confidentiality uh, authentication all these features this uh, on transport layer segment some modification be, will be done by the ip security module and it will add the ip security header on ahead of it then then we'll take this packet and ipv4 or ipv6 header is attached to it and then it is sent so when host is want to send some packet with security features to destination it use it is using transport mode because if you see all the transform all the transformation which is providing uh, by the ip security module is performed only on the payload part only on the transport layer part ip v4 header or ip uh, v6 header we uh, ip security model has uh, ip security module has not provide uh, any uh, is not transforming or modifying this part fine so when we want to communicate between from host to host transport mode is the best option we should use the other mode in which ip security works is tunnel mode what happens is this mode is when the transport layer packet is came the ipv6 and ipv4 header is attached like in the normal uh, normal packet now when this complete packet along with the header ip security module will transform this complete packet that is it will provide some encryption or uh, it will put some uh, transformation or modification on this complete packet and after that it will add it header ip security header will be added now after ip security module it will be again given to the ipv6 or ipv4 uh, protocol and it will uh, attach ipv4 header or ipv6 header correspondingly now this header or this header could be different with some changes fine so if you see uh, if you observe in the transport mode the modification is done only on the payload part or the transport layer part of the network layer in this mode the transformation or the security is provided to the whole of the packet along with the ipv4 header so this method is best when we want to communicate with from router to router or the or in between the intermediate router so transport mode is used to provide security feature from host to host and tunnel mode is used to provide security feature from router to router because here modification is provided on the whole part along with the header part and here the uh, modification is provided only on the payload part of the network layer so ipv6 addresses so ipv6 addresses is of 128 bit so as in case of ipv4 we have three kinds of addresses unicast multicast and anycast if you remember in ipv4 we have broadcast also but in this ipv6 we don't have broadcast address because it is uh, explicit, uh, it is implicit, uh, implicitly present in the multicast address only. See, so unicast address are just like a normal IP addresses. So every interface, for every interface, we use to provide the unicast address. Fine, like as in case of IPv4. Multicast address means it is the address one to many. So one address is representing the group of users. Fine. So if this is a group of user, this address has, to, has been provided to, to this address is representing all these group of users. Now these, these group of users can be geographically uh, at different location, that, uh, that's not important, but it is a group for a group of users. So for example, uh, there, uh, for a, uh, there has been a live streaming of some match. So all the users which have subscribed for that match, 
there will be a multicast address will be provided to the, to those users and all the users which have uh, which have got that uh, multicast address only those users will be able to get the live streaming packets fine uh, we have a feature called anycast feature anycast means the packet will be delivered from source the packet will be delivered to the closest host and that host is responsible for delivering the packet to all other hosts fine so to implement anycast feature all the packets all the nodes for which we want to deliver the packet has been given the same ip address i1 i1 and i1 so this packet is uh, will be sent to these nodes the uh, the node which is the closer to this node or source the node which is closer to this source will receive the packet first and then that node will be responsible to deliver packet to all other nodes fine so suppose this is a source uh, and this is sending packet to ip address i1 which is of these nodes fine so whichever node from which uh, to from among these nodes whichever node is getting the packet first then that node is responsible for uh, then that node is responsible for delivering the packet to all other nodes so ipv6 work till here the anycast feature of ipv6 is still here when source is delivering the packet to the closest destination and that destination is possible for distributing this or delivering this packet to all other nodes so this is the anycast now in ipv6 unlike ipv4 we don't have the broadcast address so you, if you remember the in broadcast we have all bits one fine but in ipv6 we don't have broadcast address because why so multicast is from one to many and broadcast multicast is from one to many and broadcast is from one to all so broadcast address is represented by the multicast address only in case of ipv6 we don't have explicit address uh, as like in case of ipv4 we don't have broadcast address in ipv6 fine as a repercussion of which is so uh, if you remember in case of uh, ipv4 we have network id part and the host id part but we can't have all ones in either uh, network id part or host id part why because all one was representing the broadcast address but in ipv6 all one is a valid address because there is no broadcast address fine okay so ipv6 address is of 128 bit long so as for ipv4 we have a decimal representation for ipv6 we have colon hexa representation because uh, like you know, this wise the uh, address look more cleaner fine so what is colon hexa representation is the group of four bits will be represented in a hexadecimal notation fine so each group of four bit is represented in the hexadecimal notation fine so like a b c d so a b a represent four first four bits b represent first four bits so each two hexadecimal bits are representing the each byte fine then we write them in two bytes uh, two bytes pair like four hexadecimal digits uh, and we uh, put colon here likewise fine so this part is actually two bytes so to uh, ipv6 address is of total of 16 bytes so we have eight parts here fine and this is a total of 16 bytes fine since uh, we are at the beginning of ipv6 stage and we are not using so many addresses uh, there are most of the bits in the addresses are zero so we have a shorthand notation for that is all the leading zeros all the okay suppose you have this address so you can represent this address in the shorthand notation also why what you can represent all the you can remove all the leading one so this part can be represented by just one and what else you can do is these continuous zeros four zeros you can represent it by a single zero fine so the address your your uh, in the shorter notation your address will become a b c d colon 0 colon 0 colon 0 colon 1 colon 0 colon 0 colon 1 fine there is one more shorthand notation which you can do is if there is a sequence of zero fine you can remove this zero and just put two columns fine so the again short hand uh, if you do it short further it will become a b c d 2 colon 
0 0 1. Now, this is justifi uh, justifiable because you know that in total IPv6 address has 8 parts. So, if I have put 2 columns here, so there is 1 part is this, 1 part is this, 1 part is this, 1 part is this, 1 part is this. So, total there are 5 parts here, but we have 2 columns presented here. That means, and in IPv6 address we have 8 parts. So, in between these 2 columns, colon there are 3 0 means 3 parts are there so this is justifiable but if you have two sequences of 0 you are allowed to put colon for just one sequence why then only it's justifiable suppose you are uh, short and handing both these sequences then it will become a b c d colon colon 1 colon colon 1 now a b c d 1 a b c 1 so there are three parts so we know that there are five more parts but we don't know that five more parts uh, it may be the case that three parts are here two parts are here or one part is here four part is there so it can make us confused so this is a wrong notation this is the right notation because in this notation there is no ambiguity fine so if there are two sequences of zero you are allowed to put you are allowed to collapse only one sequence and uh, the group of zero can be represented by single zero and leading zero you can ignore in order to provide uh, in order to write the ipv6 adder in a shorter notation so like in IPv4, we have spatial addresses called loopback addresses uh, or multicast addresses. They have various, uh, they have some pattern in the address by which a router can recognize that it is a spatial address or a loopback address or like that. So in case of IPv6, uh, also we have something, fine. So if the first eight bits are zero, that means, uh, so right now that uh, that address are reserved for future addresses, uh, for future addresses. So if the first eight bit are of this pattern, triple 40 and 4301 or for 60 followed by 150 followed by 140 followed by 21 right now these addresses are unassigned because they are reserved for the special purposes fine likewise if the first four bit are 0001 it is reserved for future if the first three bits are 100 it is reserved for future if the first three bits are 010 that means the router can recognize that it is a provider based unicast address fine so, in unicast address, we have two types, provider base and geographic base. So, since IPv6 address is a 128 bit, we can provide uh, along with the host information, we can provide the multiple notations, uh, multiple uh, information in the address itself, fine. So, if you see the unicast address, it is of two type, provider, uh, provider, uh, provider base unicast address and the geographic based unicast address. So, in the provider based unicast address, inside the unicast address, you can provide the information about the uh, ISP provider it is using, fine. Similarly, in case of geographic based unicast address, along with the address, you can provide the geographic location of the host, fine. So, the, these information can be uh, uh, informed uh, inside the IPv6 address. So, if the first three bits are 010, it is of type provider based unicast address. So, the router can get the information about the provider in the address and if the first three bits are 001, then it is a geographic based unicast address. So, the router can be, uh, can uh, find the geographic location of the host inside the address only, fine. And these three bits 011, if these three bits are 011, this is also an assigned address. I think this is reserved for some special purposes, fine. So, if you remember in IPv4, we have a concept of network address translation. So, if you, uh, if you have to communicate inside one organization, you use the concept of privatization, fine. So, in IPv4, we have a something, a concept called network address translation. So, if we are, we have to communicate uh, within the organization, we use the concept of privatization. Fine. So, uh, to communicate among these stations inside an organization, we use private IP addresses and if we want to communicate outside the organization, we convert the private address into the public address and then communicate like this. Fine. So, we have something called network address translation to translate the private address to the public address and to the public address to the private address. Fine. So, the same concept of privatization or the private address is provided in IPv6 also, but in the different form. So, it says that if the first bits, if the first uh, of these many bits are this, these like 4, 1, 3, 1 and 0, 1, 0, then it is of type local uh, link local address. If the bits are 4, 1, 3, 1 and 0, 1, 1, it is site local address 
and if it is 4 1 4, 4 1 and 5 1 it is a multicast address fine so what do you mean by link local addresses if uh, if there is only one subnet if there is only one subnet which is uh, uh, attached to the organization and if you want to communicate in the this subnet only fine so this is a link this is link and you want to communicate within this link locally then you need what do you need is just the link local address fine so to communicate among these you just need link local address if you have a router and it has multiple subnets and if you want to communicate from one subnet to the other subnet so this is one complete site or inside one organization if there are multiple subnet so this organization will be called as site and if you want to communicate locally in this site or in this organization what will use is uh, this the site local address and uh, if the first bits are these then it is our type multicast address fine so the, this much only uh, you need about, in gate about ipv6 address and ipv6 so i think this much will be sufficient to answer uh, each and every question of gate so what i'll request you to uh, just watch this video twice or thrice and uh, don't try to uh, cram anything just go through this video so it will give you the basic idea of what are the field which we are using the header form and, and what kind of address we are using and why these features are included so if the, the gate question is formed on this topic you will be able to answer it fine so all the very best for the gate this is all about 